Hi, welcome to chapter two of our Bible study this year, Into the Light, Finding Hope Through Prayers of Lament. Thanks for joining me for this um, little recap and opportunity to sit in this subject with you. Let's pray together. Loving God, we come from our own homes, our own lives, our own work, and become your people in this time. We see the kingdom of God among us guide our time together. May our laughter and our tears, our faith and our uncertainties rest in you alone, our strength, our redeemer, our refuge. Amen. Well, we are in the second chapter, Lamenting Together. And I love the gift of lament. I talked about this last month. It's a gift for us individually and it's a gift for us collectively as well. And so I really appreciate what the Reverend Joyce McKeegan Walker has written about this. She says, our study tells us to do what the communities of the Psalm writers did lament. Name the injustices, call out the power brokers, speak the evil you see and the justice you crave. Beg God to show up and do something. And then, then, remember why you were here. Remember who gave you eyes to see evil and a voice to name it. Remember who gave you life so you could nurture life in others. Remember you are all God's children through faith in Jesus Christ. All of you who were baptized in Christ have been clothed have clothed themselves in Christ. That's from Galatians chapter three, verses 26 and 27. And remember when lament is spoken out loud to God and everyone is present to hear it, the lament appeals to God for help, but it's also an expectation that those who hear will know about a situation and then will address and act it as well. I appreciate how this lesson, these verses that we'll sit with today, call us to practice lament. I don't know if you have ever tried sitting with a notepad and listing and just naming out the things that you lament, are disappointed in, that you have a deep sadness for yourself and for the world. If you haven't done that, I would encourage you to. It, it reminds me of what Mr. Rogers says. If we name it, we can make it better. So sometimes I think we are afraid to name lament or to name the places where we're disappointed or we're sad or heartbroken by because we, we and maybe rightly so, are afraid that, it, afraid that they will overwhelm us um, like a, a, a wave catching you off guard at the beach, knocks you over, takes your feet out from underneath you. So we're afraid to lament and to grieve publicly or even privately because we're afraid we'll just be washed out by them. But Mr. Rogers says if we can name it, we can do something about it. I believe the psalmist is calling us in that same way. If we name the places in our world and our lives that break our hearts, we can be set free to claim the co-working we get to do with God and with one another. I believe that a lot of the marches and protesting we've seen this last year have been communal laments have been people grieved by the systems of racism in our country, the broken places in the way we care for one another, naming together that things are not as they should be, that we are better than these things. And so as a expression of lament, the psalmist wrote to include others, to name the hard, to say, God, get in on this. Come on, we know you care. And saying to one another, what can we do about this together? The communal elements call us for a change in how we grieve. Not that we would get stuck in our grief, but that the grief and the naming of the hard, the broken places, the injustices of the world, the oppression, calling out the oppressors and evil would rally us and not foster hate and injustice, but would flame hope and embolden the body of believers into action. Biblical lament addresses God, names the complaint, asks God to ask, and then confirms faith that God will ask. 
will act. Look throughout the Psalms, 60 out of 150 are lament. Very often, if we are to pray the prayers of lament in the Bible, it may be that we're not in a season of lament. We may not feel like those words belong to us. If you're reading through the Psalms and you come to a Psalm and you think, oh, those, those, that's not my prayer today, sit for a moment and think about whose prayer is it? Where are there mothers who are crying out to God? Where are there parents who are devastated by the loss of their children, by the lack of hope that they see? Look at communities that are in exile or refugees that have been ejected from their lands. We hear those cries in the Psalms. Pay attention to them and pray for those who would know those. Yeah, I'll leave that there for now. I wonder how you hear Romans chapter 12 verses four and five. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ and individual, individually members of one another. Paul is saying we belong to each other. Paul later on in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 lists Christ's body, lists the body of believers in the world as the body of Christ and says we belong to each other in the same way our eyes and our ears and our hands and our feet belong to each other. And I don't know about you, but when I get a migraine or I um, am having a hard day with my legs, my whole body is affected by that. And so when Paul is trying to say when one part of our body hurts, when one element of our community or one person in our community is struggling or is fighting something, it affects the fullness of who we are. So I appreciate that lament and practicing lament as we study this this year is calling us to own that communal effect of hard. And we should name that for not only for ourselves, but for one another. And so in that, let's do a little practicing. Now, I wonder, maybe you wanna just pause this for a moment and get a piece of paper. And I'd like you, like I said before, to list some things that in your heart you're lamenting. They can be things you've seen online, things you've heard in the news, things that are happening in your own body and family in your own self, in your own community, in our own country, in our world? What are the things that you lament? Go ahead and pause now and just make a list because there's a lot of hard that we're going through. I've heard even just this last week, people's caution and people's concern with the numbers of COVID cases and deaths that we've seen coming in the last weeks and that are projected in front of us. That's hard. The transition of leadership and the brokenness of our own country is hard. Knowing that children are going through chemo friends and family waiting for diagnosis. The disappointment of things not being as we would hope they would be. Grieving that Thanksgiving won't be the Thanksgivings we know, we've known before. The fatigue of having to be so cautious. These are just a few that we named in Bible study on Thursday. I wonder how they match up with your list. I do think often we're over, we're cautious because we're afraid to be overwhelmed by the lament, but I hope that you find hope in hearing that others share your laments, that others are struggling and doing the best they can as well. In Psalm 137, and this is a hard psalm, um, the psalmist is writing out from the exile. They're not in a place they want to be. They're not in what they consider home or a place of comfort. They're in Babylon. This isn't their way. This isn't their place. This doesn't feel normal. Listen to the psalmist's words. You might read this in a couple of different translations. Feel free to pause me 
and go and get a couple other translations. Or just sit with this reading. It's verses one through nine. It's not a very long psalm, but there's a lot of deep emotion. So listen for what the psalmist is writing. These are the psalmist's words, not God's words, but these are the psalmist's words to God, to the community, to hear the lament of their heart. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. There we wept when we remembered Zion. On the willows there, we hung up our harps. For, they, for there our captors asked us for songs and our tormentors asked for mirth, saying, sing us one of your songs of Zion. How could we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. Let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not remember you, if I do not set Jerusalem among my highest joy. Remember, O Lord, against the Emnamites, the day of Jerusalem's fall, how they said, tear it down, tear it down, down to its foundations. O daughter of Babylon, you devastator, Happy shall they be who pay you back what you have done to us. Happy shall they be who take your little ones and dash them amongst the rocks. Holy words, holy wisdom, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Not thanks be to God that they were in exile. Not thanks be to God that they knew these hard things. But thanks be to God that they turn their hearts to God, that they cry out to God, that they cry out to each other, that they are so raw and true. I'm going to read these verses again, and I want you to pay attention to what stands out to you and what brings you hope, at least in verses 1 through 3 first. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and there we wept when we remembered Zion on the willows there we hung up our harps, for there our captors asked us for songs and our tormentors asked for mirth, saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. What did you hear? What shared memory in the community would give you hope? Let's hear verses four through six. How could we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. Let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not remember you, if I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. Hmm. What stands out to you in those verses? Where do you hold, where do you hold those verses? When is a time you didn't feel like singing? And you even felt mocked by things that were happening in your life. Or when is this been a sound or a cry you've heard in others? Let's hear verses 7 through 9. Remember, O Lord, against the Enemites, the day of Jerusalem's fall, how they said, tear it down, tear it down, down to its foundations. O daughter of Babylon, you devastator, Happy shall they be who pay you back for what you've done for us, done to us. Happy shall they be who take your little ones and dash them against the rock. Those are hard verses to hear. What would be your response to these verses? What catches you here? How do you feel about happy are they? What are we used to hearing Happy are they tends to be used for the Beatitudes. And here we hear it as a happy are they who do horrible things. This may not be your prayer or it may be. When is a time then that you have been so outraged, so heartbroken, so crushed by something happening in your world or in the world that this could have been your prayer or is your prayer? Where have you cried out to God? Get into it. Let's go. 
Where have you wanted to grab other brothers and sisters in Christ and say, come on, wake up, we have work to do. It's hard to hear these verses, Psalm 137. But it's important that we hear the honesty of humanity, the real grief, and the love meant in remembering. This is not God's voice. This is the psalmist's voice. Let's remember that. And we may not be able to connect to the rawness and the realness of it, but I think many of us do. But there is this element that belongs to so many in our world. I can imagine a Palestinian mother crying out for her child and crying against her oppressor, oppressors. I can imagine this prayer and this psalm being a part of George Floyd's family, family prayers, or Emmett Till's. I preached on Joseph last week, and I can imagine that somewhere in Joseph's promise process of his brothers selling him, sending him being sent off to Egypt, his imprisonment, his false accusations of rape from Potiphar's wife, that he might have prayed these prayers. The rawness, the honesty, the depths of the pain that comes with praying for this kind of curse is the truest element of lament. How do you think lamenting like this strengthens those who pray? Isn't that a question to sit with? How does praying this kind of honesty, this kind of fullness strengthen the prayer? How does it strengthen you to be so honest with God, to be so honest with others? How does it strengthen your heart, your faith, your hope? And although hard to hear in scripture, there are for many that this rings true. We're called to community to lament and it activates grief into change, into empathy, into compassion and into mercy and then into justice. Even when there's division or differences of opinion, to find a common lament, a common grief shared can bring a community into action together. It's really easy to feel overwhelmed by the amount of lament in our world. And I'm drawn to Micah 6, 8, which I really appreciate that it calls us to justice, to kindness or mercy, and then to walk humbly with God. But I love how it, I, I love how it is often um, shared saying, do not be daunted by the enormity of the world's grief, but do justice now, love mercy now, walk humbly now. You're not obligated to complete the work, but neither are you free to abandon it. We aren't given a pass at seeking justice. We aren't given a pass at walking away from the hard or being kind or seeking mercy or walking humbly with our God or walking humbly with each other. We can't let ourselves be overwhelmed by the grief and the lament. We can't allow it to wash us over or knock us down so we need to pick a piece of that. You may not be able to fight climate change and the injustices at the border and systematic racism, but there are pieces and elements of those things that call to your heart where you hear someone else's lament and you join. So I would encourage you to find an organization that does work that's connected with what is stirred in your heart, with the Holy Spirit bubbles up for you in the world and the work of injustice and lament. Where can you give your time, your energy, letter writing, use of your imagination, acts of kindness to a cause? Where when you read the laments of something in the news, in a newsletter, hearing from a friend and you say, oh, that breaks my heart as well. Where can you put your lament alongside someone else's, alongside God's work there? 
to incorrect, to correct the injustices that make us cry out, that make us grieve, that make us glad that we're not alone in this. I'm glad for these practices. I'm glad for hard scriptures. I'm glad our God invites us to this work together alongside one another and alongside our God. Let's pray together. We are grateful, holy God, that you give your children the gift of each other. We thank you for the invitation to honesty. We thank you for the invitation of being your people. May we be knit together, bear one another's burdens, express our shared sorrow and shared lament, remembering that we are not alone. May we be courageous enough to speak the truth, to name the hard, and to act in your love. In Jesus' example, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' power, we pray these things. Amen. Thanks for sitting with me in this portion of the study. I'll see you next month for chapter three.